verse 24. By this time, the boat was in the middle of the sea. And it was at the middle or in the middle that it was being battered by the waves because it's at the middle that the wind will go against it. There's something called the waves. There's something called the winds. You will never see them at the beginning. They are reserved for the middle. And a marriage is at the middle right now. The middle. Somebody who started raising children at the beginning, everything went well. You are now in the middle. They are teenage years. And it's now that you are at the middle that it seems that the waves and the winds are battering against you. Verse 25. Shortly before down, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. So here they are on the sea struggling. Here they are on the sea battling with issues in the middle. And ladies and gentlemen, at that same middle point, they found somebody else who was working on what they are struggling with. So I started talking about finishing strong. And last Sunday I spoke about the part one of finishing strong, which is starting well. The reason why ministry struggle today, go back to it, is how they started. So don't just keep your eyes at the breasting of the tape. If you messed up the beginning, they are off. You will need de double the work in the middle phase to be able to get to the end. If you get, them at, get there at the time that you intend to get it and to get there. And if you get there the way you ought to get there. Paul, who said there shall be no loss except for the loss of the sheep. You know why, sir? At the beginning of the journey, Paul had warned that we should not even sell out. At the beginning, he warned, let's not get on this journey. But they said, no, 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 no. Now they got to the middle and they ran into trouble. Eventually, they got to the end, but without a sheep. Well, what I'm saying in essence is, do you want to spend the rest of your life when you should be at rest correcting the errors of your beginning? So it can only end well if it begins well. And if it didn't begin well and it has to end well, you have a lot of work to do where? I'm not hearing you from where? No, let me hear you again. You have work to do where? Middle. Middle is the time when you give your best so that you can end up having your rest. Middle phase is that moment in your life when you give your best so that you can end up having your rest. It's a time when you read all you have to read. It's a time when you engage in all you have to engage in. It's a time when you do all you have to do. So there's a second phase called the middle phase. And in the middle phase, two things are very critical. You must increase your speed and increase your commitment. Middle phase in life, when you're in that middle phase of your life, that's when to take on more responsibilities. Relevant to the assignment you're pursuing. That's not the time to run away from work. That's not the time to run away, shy away from assignment. That's not when to shy away from responsibilities. The middle phase. Hello, sir. I have never seen a marathoner waiting until the day of 10,000 kilometers before he now begins to prove he can run. That on the day of your championship, that's when you start rehearsing. You never use championship to rehearse. See, if you've not clocked 9.8 during your trials, during your training, if you've not clocked 9.8, if all you've been clocking is 10.57, 12.8 during your training, and you now say, by God's grace, when I get there, on the day of the sprint, I will clock 9.8 by the power of God. You will know that the power of God supports everybody that works very hard. At the middle, don't forget you've never been there before. So you will need to look out to others who are doing well. Please watch this. They did not call to somebody who has gone ahead of them. Learn that. They call to somebody who is not too far from them. That was why when Mary 
was going to conceive, the angel told her that your sister Elizabeth is six months pregnant. Don't go to somebody who has already stopped giving birth. I'm telling you this now that what you're about to carry, somebody's already six months ahead of you. I'm not telling you about somebody who has already stopped giving birth. Go to somebody who is six months ahead because in this digital age, don't let it be more than six months ahead in terms of when the person got the information and when they share it with you. If you are learning from somebody who's only about something that happened in 1914, you will be so backward that by the time you are applying what you have learned, you will be so irrelevant. So, so the rule is, make sure that if you are in the middle, find somebody who has just come through that phase, not too far from you. Now, now that puts us in a precarious position. Because what that presupposes, what that presupposes is that the person with that kind of answer will normally be my age mate or below my age. Because here we are, Pastor. The man asking for help is older than the one he's seeking help from. Because by the time Jesus was starting his ministry, Peter was already married. Ask questions. Some of the most remarkable changes that have happened in my life came because I asked questions. Questions, not provide answers. When you appear before people walking on waters, don't tell them what you know. Because after all you know is making your boats to sink. The point I'm making is, make sure that when you ask questions, ask questions that are relevant to where you are. You don't have forever to be with successful people. 